welcome everybody, especially those of you joining us on Facebook. Uh, this is Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers. Uh, and of course, we all celebrate this day because we all have a mother. Uh, let me say a couple of things on the bulletin that are wrong. There's something on here on Tuesday night at 6.30 that's just not happening. I don't know how it got on there, but it's not. Um, other than that, we have a, a regular work time around the church on 9 on, on Monday mornings. And then we have Men and Women's Bible Study on Tuesday. And then, once again, this shows worship on Saturday. We're not having that right now. So I apologize for the boo-boos, but that was me. Um, we have a, an announcement that I think Sue wants to make, if you want to come and do that. Just be loud. I don't have a microphone for you today. I know it's hard for you. I was just going to say that. Well, oh, you can go up there and use that one. Here, I can just hand it down to you. Look, it's portable. There you go. Well, good morning, everybody. I just wanted to remind everybody that we are celebrating the retirement of Pastor Jack on the 4th, starting at 4 p.m. There are also thank you cards available on the back table where the announcements are in case you want to make a personal note for Pastor Jack and or Kathy. And if you have any questions, please see Ron, Harry, Holly, or myself. Thank you. Thank you. So we're going to begin. We we we're going to begin with the video, and as soon as we get that, we're going to sing "Surely the Presence of the Lord." So we'll, we'll let it go. sing surely the presence of the Lord a couple of times just remain seated as we say. Thank you. 
If you will please stand, we'll have a responsive reading this morning honoring mothers. It's printed in your bulletin. I believe it's going to be on the screen as well. Mothers come in many different forms, and today we celebrate them all. Thank you, mother. Everyone here is either a son or a daughter. Thank God for my mother. For those women who have joined God in heaven and whom we miss dearly here on earth. Thank God for the past. For every woman who is working day and night to rear her children right now. Thank God for the mothers of today. For all women who are expecting but aren't quite mothers yet. Thank God for soon to be mothers. For the women who took in others' children through adoption and foster care. Thank God for mothers with hearts so for those women who have lost a child to death and must carry on. Thank God for mothers who are so strong. For all the women who have desperately wanted to have children of their own, but chose instead to mother everyone else. Thank God for the mothers of your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for the women who have influenced our lives in so many ways. We pray that we will honor them in everything we do. Amen. Let us join together and sing Love Divine, All Loves Excel. John, please remain standing for the reading of the gospel. If you love me, you will keep my commandments, and I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you, and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I'm coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live. You also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in my Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. And if you will, remain standing as we... Affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe 
What is it that we believe? I believe in God the Father, Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day He rose from the dead, He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now. And you may be seated. We continue to minister to our community through the Blessing Box. Uh, it has been a little short of uh, supplies over the last week or so. We just need to be mindful that if we're out shopping, we can pick up an extra can of something here and there for others. I, I had to laugh the other day. I knew it was empty. And a lady pulled up in a parking lot and I was parked there, it was after hours, and I was parked on the carport, and she was unloading it, she was putting stuff in it. And uh, I just went and made sure that I thanked her for helping us do that. There are a lot of people doing that, we just don't sometimes get to see that part at all. In a few seconds, I'll invite the ushers to come forward for the collection of our gifts, tithes, and offerings. I would invite you to come now. Let's pray. Gracious and loving God, you have given us the opportunity to be the hands and feet of Jesus in this community and in the extension to the whole world. Today, as we give our time and our treasure and our talents, we ask you to receive them as we joyfully give so that we can do the ministry you called us to do in this community and throughout the world. It's in the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. every time I feel the Spirit.
for the prayers as you may have saw seen if you looked at it on Facebook I had blood work this work and my PSA was undetectable which means we've got some victory going on the issue is we don't know why because uh, they, they give me that wonderful shot that makes me feel so horrible uh, that has knocked away my testosterone so right now uh, my normal testosterone level is around 450 470 and it's nine uh, so in other words there's none there so uh, that means I don't really want to do much, <laughs> and so I'm doing everything I can. I also started some new medication. Uh, there's no telling what I will say today, so you may want to stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> all I know is they told me if I got in a drug test somewhere, I'd tell them I was taking it because it would show up. So apparently it's pretty good stuff. I don't know. Uh, but uh, And I'm only, this is my third day, so I know a little bit about that stuff. It takes a few weeks for it to get into you, you get settled, and so... I, you know, you may want to stay tuned. And all of you on Facebook, there's no telling what will happen today. But right now, I, I am thankful for the prayers. And so we're going to join together and pray. Gracious God, you know, we, we all lift up prayers for those that we love and care about. And sometimes we get so caught up in that, we forget that there's a bigger prayer. And that's for your kingdom to come on earth the way it is in heaven. For people to feel and encourage each other with love, even if maybe they're not all that desirable as people. God, it's an awesome and sometimes very difficult t task to love our enemies, to love those that don't live and think like we do. But you've called us to be above that to not be so concerned with what we see, but to be concerned with what you see. And really what you look for is the heart. So we confess that we have uh, at times not been jovial or welcoming to someone simply because of what we saw, how they looked, maybe how they lived. And we confess that we don't know how to do what you've called us to do. So we believe that the closer we get to you and the more of your spirit we have in us, the more also of your sight and your eyesight that we have to see people for what they can be, not what they are right now. We all give thanks that there's been some movement from what we used to be to where we are. And we also all recognize that there's some movement needed to be from where we are to be what you want us to be. We read the stories about Jesus in, in the Gospels. And we see that there were times when he was not understood. Even the disciples who were with him all the time would say things like, what does that mean? But we know the end of the story. We know that he talked about traveling to Jerusalem. That he knew they would capture and persecute him. And that they would kill him. But he also knew that God's Spirit would renew him and bring him back 
And that's what gives us hope and faith. That that same death that overcame Him, we will overcome with the Spirit to be not only with you, but more like you. So God, help us to realize we don't have to wait till we die to do that. We can start right now living into the Spirit of love and mercy and grace. The disciples, like us, sometimes didn't know how to pray, and they asked Jesus, teach us how to pray, and He said, pray like this. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be Thy name. Thy kingdom come, Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we get ready to hear from Acts this morning, let's sing Be Thou My Vision. the apostles in the 17th chapter. Then Paul stood in front of the Eropagus. Er- 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 my speech is weird today. I'm sorry, folks. Eropagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with an inscription to an unknown God. Whatever, what therefore you worship is unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, He who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands. Nor is He served by human hands as though He needed anything, since He Himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor He made all the nations to inhabit the world, the, the earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of the place where they would live, so that they would search for God, perhaps grope for Him and find Him, although indeed He is not far from each one of us. For in Him we live and move and have our being, as even some of your own poets have said, for we too are His offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now He commands all people everywhere to repent, because He has fixed a day on which He will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom He has appointed. And of this, He has given assistance to all by raising Him from the dead. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. God. You know, I've been a Methodist for ever. I was a Methodist until 1968 when I became a United Methodist. That was from a merger of the Evangelical United Brethren and the Methodist Church. 
And so we became united. It's kind of funny that you call it that because we've never been that united, really. Uh, we have a long history of having diversity within our ranks. We have a wide and open pathway. And uh, I've just not heard very many Methodist sermons that were entitled, God Demands Repentance. God doesn't suggest it. Everything depends on that. If we don't repent and believe the gospel, if we don't turn from our evil ways, as Santana said, if we don't realize that we have issues, we can't change anything. We have to know where the problem is. When I first got into AA some 33 years ago, uh, I know I've told part of this story before, but I was at a party uh, probably 35 years ago. We were out at Silver Beach. It was all the staff from the psychiatric hospital I worked at. We were all there. Jerry Jeff Walker was our, our entertainer, who was in recovery, by the way, at the time. Uh, I believe he was the only sober person in the whole entire place. And the head of the chemical dependency unit came up to me and she said, uh, Jack, how many of those beers have you had? And I said, oh, I don't know, 20? Oh my. Well, they were little. <laughs> oh, yuck. I mean, they were like just barely coffee cup size. You know, it was a keg. And, and uh, she said, well, you don't seem very different. And I said, well, that's good, isn't it? She said, not so much. <laughs> she said, you might want to consider looking into the 12 steps. Now, Virginia was really smart. She knew that if she called me an alcoholic, I was going to call her a liar. So I went and bought my way to a bookstore at Baywood Hospital at that time. I went and bought myself a book called The 12 Steps for Anybody. I mean, I don't have to confess anything that way. It's anybody, right? And so during the Dallas Cowboy game, you know, they have a lot of commercials. <laughs> Even then, I finished the 12 step book during a three hour football game. And I ran into Virginia a couple of days later, and she said, well, what did you think about the 12 steps? I said, they were great, I worked them. <laughs> well, time went by, and life got lived. On September the 1st, 1989, was uh, Labor Day, and I called my therapist and uh, said something about not having a good night. <coughs> And she said, you know, I, I've noticed that you make better decisions when you don't drink. Well, that's logical because the first thing you lose when you drink is judgment. I mean, you know, really, come on. And so uh, she said, I would suggest, I'm not telling you, that maybe you would want to not drink for a little while. And let's just see what happens. Well, on September the 1st, that'll be 34 years ago. But there was a time in there when I had to go from thinking, oh, this is good for anybody, to understanding, wait a minute, this is about me. Now, I tell that story not to raise myself up for having 33 years of sobriety. That's just one day at a time I did it. But, but what I want to tell you is that's really what, when we hear repent and believe the gospel, we hear repent and change your life. We say repent and turn to God. It simply means that we have to understand we're not on the right journey most of the time. And the only person that can put us on the right journey is us. I love that Paul stood up in, in Athens and said, you guys have gods for everything. I mean, we could do the same thing now, couldn't we? We got gods that are big uh, F-250 pickups, and Silverado pickups, and, and uh, uh, beach houses, and golf club. I mean, we got gods for everything, right? And how much of our time do we spend on the real God, the unknown God, before we get in? I'm not saying any of those things are bad. But the first focus has to be on repenting my life, realizing that I have put things in the wrong priority. I've done some of the wrong things, and I need help getting them right. Amen? Amen. Because if you only know what you know, you can't change anything. It takes effort to realize the places that you've gone wrong. 
decisions you made that you might could have made better. Things that you did, I mean, you know, and I'm not saying anybody should get out of consequences or anything like that. I, what I'm saying is, in your own mind, you have to realize that there has to be a change and it needs to start here. Now, I, over the years, have known many, many therapists and, and I have heard a lot of people be, have fear about going to therapists. I've never met a therapist that was any good, especially a licensed one, that tried to get anybody to be something that they shouldn't have been. What they try to do is get them to reach inside and find out who they are. I did a, a LifeWorks weekend one time. It, it's kind of like Emmaus in, in the church group. And uh, so they made us leave our cell phones and stuff all aside. We were for three days. We would listen to a lecture and then we'd go to therapy. And we'd listen to a lecture and go to therapy. And I remember that the, I'm a fairly typical guy uh, in that I'm probably mostly detached from my feelings most of the time. Uh, you know, you ladies don't comprehend what that's like, but the guys know what I'm talking about. Uh, you know, you ask us how we feel and we'll say we're busy. Or how you feel, I'm tired. Those are not the feelings we're looking for, right? We're looking for the feelings of I'm angry or I'm sad or I'm lonely. Well, that's just not guy talk most of the time. It's just not. And so we have this, this, and then on top of that, we probably grew up by somebody telling us little boys don't cry. And that's baloney too. So we've got detached from our feelings in a way. And so I remember being in this session and, and the therapist kept asking me, I would answer a question and she would say, she was from Canada, she would say, and about that you feel. And I'd answer and she'd say, about that you feel. She's trying to find a feeling somewhere. And finally she had me lay down on the floor and she took toilet paper and tissues and covered me up and she said, you're dead. You're not having any feelings at all. Well, you know, I got to tell you, that's a whole lot of what goes on when we talk about this repentant stuff. We can confess that, oh, well, when I was a teenager, I shoplifted something once. Or, but we're not catching on to the fact that we're not really participating in God's kingdom. We're not really doing the work that God calls us to do, which is simple, right? Love one another as I've loved you. I mean, how complicated is that? How much is that? He loved us enough to go to the cross. That's how much it is. Amen. And so if we're not loving others, if we're not reaching out to others, if we're not trying to infect others with the love and mercy and grace of Jesus Christ, then we're sitting on our hands. And today's attendance in churches all around the country would prove that. We just have a tendency. I, there was a story. I'm not going to get it exactly right. But there was a story I put on Facebook. Some of you may have seen it. About the farmer that had a, a bumper award winning corn crop. What? And it was, a, you know, he grows corn. And he has award winning corn. And so the news reporter said, well, I'm amazed that you save some of your seed and you give it to your neighbors. And he said, well, you know, the way corn works, it gets cross-pollinated cross from the fields next to it. And so if they've got inferior stuff, it's going to cross-pollinate with mine and lower the quality of it for everybody. He said, so if I give them the best stuff, mine continues to be the best stuff. And, and my short way of saying that, friends, is when churches are doing the right thing, the rising tide will raise all the boats. I'm not trying to raise the Methodist church to bigger attendance. I want all churches to prosper. Amen. And I want to tell you, we all need to stand up in front of the world and say, let me tell you about the God you don't know. Because our God is the God that can turn disaster into to miracles. Amen. Our God is the God that can turn awful things into great things. And God is there all the time. But we have this, this innate ability to, to uh, well, you know, we know God. We, we're, we're, we're happy to think about you. But we've got these problems. You know, I'm not making enough at work. or My family's in disarray. or My kids aren't doing what they're supposed to do. And what God would simply say, what I think Paul would say is move God to the front. Start to look at your problems through God and you'll start to see different answers. You know, we get mad at people sometimes and anger's not a bad thing. Anger can give you strength. Properly used. That's different than rage. Rage is never good. Never. Rage is really a combination of boundaryless and depression usually. It's not anything to do with, with being angry. You know, I'm talking about that screaming fit that you have that's, that's uh, abusive to yourself and anybody hearing it. Real anger 
is that kind of anger that, that my kids had such a hard time with when I learned it. I would say things like, it makes me angry for you not to wear socks when you go to school. And, and, and they said, well, why? I said, well, because it makes your shoes stink and all the other stuff that goes along with it. And they said, well, we liked it better when you screamed at us. <laughs> it makes me angry that people dishonor our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. It makes me angry that we live in a world right now where that doesn't seem the priority. It makes me angry that fellow Christians can be judgmental about other Christians who are just doing the best they can to find God. Yep. I don't have the best way. I just have my way. And you've got your way. Sometimes we do it through music and we sing the songs. I love the Be Thou My Vision song. It's one of my favorite. I like the one on Every Time I Feel the Spirit too. Do we really ever do that? Every time I feel the Spirit, do you pray? Praying unceasingly doesn't mean you're on your knees in a prayer closet at home just praying. It means that you keep God at the top of your mind so that when things are going wrong, you can say, God, be aware of where I am and what's going on and guide me today. Amen. Jesus is more than just a friend. He's a guide, a counselor. He has set the path for us. In the Gospel of John, the 14th chapter, those things happen, those words are read often, very often, in funerals. But he says, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words. And that your words you hear from them is not mine. I have sent these things to you while I'm still with you. But the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, the Father will send in my name. He will teach you everything. The Gospel of John in the 14th chapter really to me says it all. It's got the part in there where it's questioned. We don't know the way. Really, do you all know the way? Jesus is the way, the truth, the life. Amen. That's the answer. What's the way to the future? What's the way to salvation? What's the way to an improved life? It comes through Jesus Christ. Amen. And yes, that gives us eternity, but I want to talk about now. We don't have to miss out on this opportunity right now. We can see lives change. We can see miracles happen. We can see people we don't even know drive up to the food box and put food in it. We're so results oriented that we think if we pray, we should get an answer right now. Hey, listen to Garth Brooks. He thanks God for an unanswered prayer. Mm -hmm. And probably so do we. Sometimes we don't pray for the right stuff. That's the reason when Jesus says, if you pray for it, I'll give it to you. But that's if you're in the right mind at the right time and the right ideas doing the right thing. And really, I'm going to tell you, when he says, if you had faith and as much as a mustard seed, you could move a mountain. And the disciples in their silliness, they said, well, how do we get more faith? He said, you don't need more. You just need that much. Amen. So we have to work on understanding that. We have to work on it being real with, with being there. And I want to tell you, I believe the very first step is repentance. And to me, repentance is a big picture thing. It means, okay, I know I've done wrong. Sometimes it's on purpose. Sometimes it's by accident. I don't have not lived the life that God would have me live every moment of every day. Amen? Amen. Amen. And I need to confess that. Because if I don't, I can't change it. If I don't realize that I've made mistakes and that, 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 that I've gone off the path and I haven't listened to the Word of God, then I can't start to hear it because it says in here people that don't know, don't know. Roy Heller. I grew up in Baytown. He's a professor up at Perkins. He's an Old Testament professor. Grew up in Baytown, Texas. He was a Pentecostal. He learned the book of James in its entirety by memory. And he said even to this day, he finds it very difficult to study the book of James because he thinks he already knows it. 
maybe one of the profound things I've ever heard anybody say is there's only one thing on earth you can't learn, and that's what you already know. <laughs> so I want to submit to you that we don't know all the reasons we need to repent. Um, oh gosh, what's his name? Tony, the TV preacher. Uh, Tony Evans. He says it in a different way. The more light of Christ you get, the more you see the cracks and wrinkles in the world in front of you. We can't, it's not our vision, it's God's vision. Be thou my vision that I can see. And until we get connected to God so that we start to have the eyes of Jesus, then we really can't see what needs to change. Amen. I was never aware, and I, I mean never, of how many homeless people we had in this community. They kind of are invisible. I mean, they hide. And my heart goes out to them. I grew up thinking more or less, you know, this is a great country, put yourself up by the bootstraps and move on. But some of them can't. We had a lady visit us one year on Christmas Eve that still sleeps on the porches of some of these stop and goes around here. Uh, called the police to try, it was cold, tried to get her some help. She didn't want any help. It almost makes you want to give up, but you see there are some that do. We can't give up on trying to change the world. The mission statement of the United Methodist Church is making disciples for Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. You'll notice it is not get more people in the pews at Hope Community United Methodist Church. I mean, that'd be great, but that's not what it is. It's make disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. In order to make disciples, you've got to be one. To be a faithful follower, you have to understand why you need to follow. It's significantly shown in the Bible when all of those guys that Jesus called left what they had and followed Him. Now, all of us got a history. We all do. Some of it's great history, some of it's not. It's irrelevant today. Because the day we choose now is moving forward to be with Jesus Christ in the future, to live with Him, to teach with Him, to love with Him, to offer love, mercy, and grace. It doesn't matter where somebody was yesterday. It doesn't even matter how good we are at it. You don't have to be great to tell somebody you love them. But you have to mean it. You don't have to, to be the most stellar person on earth or rich or anything else to care. Rabbi Shachtel, who used to be at the uh, big temple over by Rice University, said one time he thought we had distorted love so much that we couldn't understand the message. You know, we love the Astros, we love the Texans, we love our dogs. He said he thought we should use the word care. Do you care about the homeless people? Do you realize that maybe by God's grace, it could be us? So I don't know what gods we deal with today, but I believe that the key to it all is repentance. I believe you've got to start there. I know this is really kind of a Lenten message we would usually give, but it's the one that came up today. I think in Acts, the, the message is clear. Paul tells them. I mean, he's really straightforward with them right there when he says, repent. The first thing you have to do is repent. So I would ask you this week, as we go through a pretty exciting time, really, as we get you know the end of school for a lot of people, a lot of graduations going on. Think back about your decisions when you were graduating. Mine was May the 24th, 1969, over here at the stadium in Rayburn. I wasn't thinking about repentance. <laughs> I was thinking about, thank God I don't have to go back to school. 
Maybe I should have been. Maybe we need to encourage more people to look at what they can be, not what they are. Look what God wants to be, not what we see ourselves as. Us. One last story about that. When I first came here to this church in 2008, it was a very meager attendance. I told them that uh, there were people out there that we could reach. And uh, they didn't believe me. But I kept saying it. We kept doing it. And two years later, one of the ladies, Frances Kirkwood, came up to me. She said, because you believed it, we're beginning to believe it. So don't give up on those friends and loved ones and other people out there that you know that you've invited or you've told about God. Or you Don't give up on them because sometimes they've got to go off your beliefs until they start to become their beliefs. John Wesley was confronted with it. He asked the Moravians, how do you preach faith when you just don't have it? And the Moravian guy with his German accent told John, he said, preach faith till you get it. Then preach faith because you have it. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. I'm stopping because that's the end, and I think I'm just about out of voice. <laughs> While she's getting ready for our last hymn, I just want to say this to the people visiting with us on Facebook. We worship here at 11 on Sunday mornings. We have plenty of room. We'd love to have you come and visit with us. My name is Jack Womack. I'm the pastor here. Uh, Hope Community United Methodist Church was chartered in 2011, and we are in some ways still very new, and in other ways we're pretty traditional. So we would love to have you join us for worship at any time. I think we're ready now. As you're able, would you stand as we sing what I think is the best closing hymn ever made for church? Facebook. We look forward to seeing you in person or here with us every week. God bless. Go in peace. Amen. Amen.